Josh, congratulations on the victory. Uh, we saw you just a month ago. Obviously, it wasn't the best night for you. Um, how, how quickly or how important was it for you to get back quickly and kind of put that one behind? Yeah, I mean, I mean that was my goal. The first thing I did when I got back from the last fight against Bryce Mitchell is I went in the gym. I told my manager, Jason House, the owner of American Top Team, Dan Lambert, I said, hey, listen, if anything comes up, I just need seven to ten days to make it wait, you know, and just, just, I mean, I'm ready to take a fight short notice. I mean, I'm ready, and I want to get back in there. The only way to come back from L is to get a W, and uh, I was able to do that tonight, so super happy. Yeah, no doubt. Did it through your striking a little bit. I mean, we think about what you as a grappler a lot of times, but uh, was that the plan coming in? Did you think you could outstrike him on the feet? Yeah, man, that's one thing you guys haven't been able to see much of me lately. I mean, I've fought in some of the best strikers in the division. You know, I fought Ye Rodriguez, Shane Burgos, both fights I was winning. You know, I thought I won the Ye Rodriguez fight. You know, I lost a split decision to him in Mexico City, his hometown. If you go back, watch that fight. I mean, I thought I won it, but, you know, that's part of the game. That's kind of why it scared me when I went to split decision tonight. I was like, oh, man, not again, but it's part of the game. You know, I've, I've had the opportunity of going to gyms all over the planet. I've got to go to Thailand to train at Wai Muay Thai. Got to go to Majiro Gym, Kyoko Gym in uh, Friesland and Amsterdam to Holland and travel the world. And then I trained American Top Team with Roger Carl and some of the best, uh, you know, striking jiu-jitsu in the planet. So I'm super blessed. And also I'll train a little bit with uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. You can see that style out there a little bit too. So, you know, these are just things that I'm always adapting and learning as a fighter. Yeah, we were hearing Wonderboy get called out a lot. Was that a, was that a code or was it a reminder? What was it? No, nah, that's just the, the style. You know, it was working tonight. You know, I had the, I had the Wonderboy stance, you know, that karate stance. And then once I started landing that straight pull two, which is one of the punches that his dad Ray taught me, I was able to land it hard. And uh, once I started landing it, man, I was really busting him up. I think I rocked him a couple times. But, uh, man, hats off to Kevin, man. The kid's nails super tough. You know, he's one of the top 20 guys in the planet. And, um, you know, I was able to take him out. So. Uh, happy to do so. Happy I was able to get the W. We were a little worried about the cut. It's kind of in a bad spot. Did it, did it bother you? No, honestly, it didn't really bother me. Like I knew it was from a headbutt, so that, that's kind of like why mentally. I think if maybe you landed like a head kick or something crazy, but I think it was at the end of the second round. I felt I felt his head smash me, and I was like, oh man. Hopefully, I I knew it was cut, and you never know how bad a cut is. So I just felt it, and I knew it was leaking, but I knew it wasn't big enough to be like a real issue. But I was so confident because. I know that he was slowing down, and I felt him slowing down, and I was like, you know, that's that, that's when I start licking my lips and uh, get to go to work, you know. <laughs> the last thing for me, what's what now? I mean, do you want to keep the ball rolling? I mean, you just fought a month ago, or do you need some time off? What's what's the next move? Nah, man, I would love to keep fighting. That's what I do. I'm, a, uh, you know, I'm a true fighter. When I was an amateur fighter, I fought 20, 20 amateur fights, and uh, you know, I I won all the fights fighting throughout the country. I was a top amateur in the country, and I was fighting every weekend, and that's what I love to do, you know. Uh, I kind of want to get back for the love of it. I hate waiting six, seven months to fight. Sometimes it's really tough, and it's a lot of stress not knowing when you're going to fight for six months. But if you just keep them coming, you always stay ready so you don't have to get ready. That's the motto I like to live by. And, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep get back in the gym as soon as I'm going to get these stitches out and get back to work. Uh, Charles, right here. This is the fourth straight fight that you are betting underdog. Uh, do you think uh, people still? Con why do you think people continuously overlook you in this? I don't know, man. But I, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I was able to cash in, you know. So I had to, uh, you know, on the Manny fight, I was an underdog. I got a big win there. I was a big underdog in this fight. I'm an underdog. I mean, I mean, that's how it is. I mean, I don't make the odds. Whoever make the odds is probably kicking themselves in the ass because they didn't do a good job. So. <laughs> Uh, I got the win tonight, and I'm happy I did. You know, made a little bit extra money because of that. You know, put a couple stacks in myself. So, let's go. And this is your first UFC win that happened outside the <laughs> garden. So, what do you think? What do you make of that? I think I got to go get another win in the the garden and continue my streak. I, you know, I have three wins in the garden. I'm I have the record for most wins in the garden, passing Conor McGregor. So, um, you know, I don't know when this COVID thing is going to be over and things get back to normal, but. Hopefully it gets back soon and I can, uh, you know, get back and fight in front of my fans because I really feel like I live off, you know, I fight much better with the fans, you know. I mean, I know I did a good good job tonight, was able to land my strikes in the distance, but, you know, I'm an adrenaline fighter. I'm a, I'm a fighter that gets in there and has wars, you know. I think tonight was a pretty good fight. You could see some good exchanges, but, man, when the when the crowd gets involved for me, it, uh, it only amps me up and gives me more, more fuel for the fire. One final one. What do you think of the uh, NHL coming back in August? Oh, man, I hope so, man. Hopefully my boy Brad Marchand gets back to work. And, you know, the Bruins look like they're favorites to win the Stanley Cup. So, you know, I'm always rocking the, you know, Boston Strong and the Bruins hard. So, uh, you know, I was able to walk out with the Boston Bruins jersey, my first win at the Garden. So, you know, it's, you know, unfortunately they don't allow us to wear the, you know, Bruins gear no more. But I'm always repping my city.
Charles, who fought in two locations without fans, Jacksonville and here at the Apex. What difference, if any, did you feel between the two? Uh, there wasn't much of a difference. Uh, honestly, the weird thing about Jacksonville is I was fighting in a huge arena. There was like a arena that seated like 20,000 people, but there was nobody in it. So it was definitely strange, you know, like looking out to the crowd. Like I remember walking out, like going to slap hands and ain't nobody there, you know. But this time I was expecting it, you know. Maybe it was a little bit of a, you know, kind of knowing what to expect a little bit. Um, I did a couple things in the gym. I was able to spar with some guys kind of coming in. I got some other UFC fighters. One kid, Jacob Kilburn, he came in. He's a UFC fighter, newcomer. And, you know, one day he just was in the gym and we're like, hey, are you going to spar this other kid? So, like, basically I was able to get sparring in with guys that I didn't know, like new guys coming into the gym, kind of making it feel like, you know, these type of fights. We got the big cage at American Top Team. We got the good coaches. So it, w it was pretty cool to be able to um, – you know, get that work in and prepare for this. And, you know, there's nothing more that I wanted to come back from the Bryce Mitchell fight to get this big win. This is what I dreamed of. This is what I worked for. And uh, there wasn't anything that was going to stop me tonight, uh, maybe besides the judges, but yeah. There's been a lot of talk about the big cage versus the little cage and our guys getting after it are just more opportunities there. Did you feel a difference in just the action for yourself? Yeah, man, I don't even notice the cage, man. I'm a fighter. I just go in there and I go to war and that's it, man. Like. I mean, my coaches were telling me, hey, it's a small cage, small cage, but for me, it makes no difference. You know, I go in there and I, I play my game and I'm willing to, you know, go to war. And, uh, you know, I, I was surprised he stopped my first takedown and his takedown defense was good. And then he tried to take me down, you know, by the end of it, once I started landing, I was surprised because he's primarily a striker. Like, I don't think, and watching all the footage I've watched of Kevin that I've seen him go for takedowns and stuff like that, but he was trying to get me down and, you know, I just dug my underhooks and, I was hoping to sprawl for like a front headlock and be able to rip off, you know, some of my submissions because I got some nasty submissions. But, you know, it, it just, you know, hats off to Kevin. Like I said, he was super tough. Final one for me. Some parts of Vegas are open. Some are still closed. Yeah. Have you thought about what you're going to do to celebrate? Yeah, you already know, man. Uh, I can't wait. I, I haven't figured it out. There's a couple of casinos open. You know, I love gambling. I'm a gambler. So uh, hopefully uh, I do well with that tonight also. <laughs> What's your game? Uh, I like roulette. Roulette's my game, so let me get a number from you. One through 36. 36. All right, let's go. John, black or red? Black. All right, black and 36. Let's go. Well, thank you, guys. Hey, appreciate you.